right, hi everyone, and welcome back. And it is the new year as well. So it's the 3rd of January, 2022. And we all hope that everyone had a nice rest as well. If you were trading a little bit last week at all, I hope that went okay. But uh, welcome back everyone to a new year and welcome to all the new people watching too that might be on YouTube and welcome obviously to the LCMS Trading Club members too. I hope everyone did have a good break as well. So we do have the currency call today and it is Monday. So that is Aussie and Kiwi, but just a quick introduction as well, just to the people that are new watching either via now with the live stream or also that are watching the delayed telecast on YouTube. So this is the daily currency call presented by Forex Trading Asia. And it is the 3rd of January, 2022. And a quick introduction, we do do this call every Monday to Friday, and the currencies we look at are as follows. So Monday, today, we've got the Aussie and Kiwi, Tuesday, the Euro, Wednesday, the Pound, Thursday, Yen and Gold, and then Fridays, we've got CAD and also cryptocurrency. Specifically, it's Bitcoin and Ethereum. And we go through the currencies, we go through market economic updates and key support and resistance levels typically in the call. We'll also discuss uh, the breaking news analysis and we'll go through that uh, when there are specific major events and we'll discuss what it all means for potential trade ideas as well. And the currency call endeavors to be very beneficial to both the long-term investors and the short-term traders. And here we will go through what could move prices possible trade ideas, and we'll highlight potential targets and risks. Finally, a disclaimer, any information shared during this session is not intended to be a trade recommendation. It is solely the opinion and views of the speaker. So please remember to do your own analysis prior to entering in any trades. Now, you would have noticed that uh, Jin is not here. That is correct. He can't make the call today, but we've got uh, Gim here instead. So what will happen is I'll go through the US dollar index to start and then Gimme will go through what happened last week within the economic calendar and also the Aussie and Kiwi, which did have some movements last week as well. I was actually looking at the pairs uh, today. It was quite interesting. But just to get things kicked off, guys, we'll just have a look at the US dollar index. And, you know, quite interesting as well, what we saw, especially you know, last week, I uh, didn't take any trades last week, but I did definitely notice that, you know, there was some weakness. Now, this is the one hour. So let's just go to the daily to get a bit of a perspective here. So th this, really what we saw was the, the candle that printed on Friday was quite bearish. And we if we go to the, the four hour, we, we saw that the lows were into the 95.50s. Uh, I just want to have a check here. So 95. 55 was the low there. And we obviously have seen a little bit of a, a retrace now. We, we saw a gap up just to start this new session here for, for the new year. And it was really what I noticed was that uh, last week equity markets did rally and it looked really like uh, the risk sentiment we've seen was very much okay with Omicron and it was really just focused on reversals against we've seen this US dollar strength uh, take place for a while. We have seen it consolidate around 96, but it, it did fall back. So, you know, just to go to an intraday perspective now, it's going to be interesting to see if we can get back up to, you know, 96, which isn't that far away around 16 pips. And we'll see what happens there. But from a news perspective, and I'll just share that, now so last week really there wasn't a lot that took place uh, in news obviously but i'm just going back from the 27th and and just to scan through and i was doing this before the call as well there wasn't really a lot to to take on it was really the market was just playing those those headline releases about what's happening with Omicron and whether or not there was going to be lockdowns in certain countries, such as, you know, in the UK or what the US was going to do. But there was some interesting China news out as well uh, for the NBS manufacturing PMIs. But again, it was really just sort of focused on what the, uh, the stock market was, was doing leading into the end of the, the year. But for uh, this week, we for today, actually, we do have some market manufacturing PMI data coming out. 
and uh, 2245 in the evening, that's GMT plus eight time zone. And that could do something. But again, really, I was scanning through. And we do obviously have the non-farm payrolls out on Friday as well. And really, we'll discuss that further uh, leading into that release at uh, 9.30 in the evening on Friday, GMT plus eight. But for now, it's just going to be interesting to see what that US dollar does. Uh, really, I'd like to see it get to 96 and whether or not it breaks through or if it pulls back is going to be something to watch for in the next few hours if it can make a move higher or maybe not and we'll just see it consolidate. But for, for now, we'll go into what happened within the economic environment uh, last week with a bit of review with Kim Hong here and also discuss the Aussie and Kiwi too. So over to you now, Gimme. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome back. It's been like forever, I think. I don't know, like 10 years, 10 decades or something like that. Okay, so I'm glad I'm back. I'm glad you guys are back. Okay, so let me just go through the economic calendar first. You guys may actually think that the first week of the new year, okay, how active can it get, right? Actually, there are things to expect. Not on Monday, definitely, because the New Zealand, Australian, Japanese, Chinese, Euro and British banks are all on holiday. Oops, and the United States and Canadian banks as well. Okay, um, so pretty much Monday, you know, we don't really have much except for the final manufacturing PMI coming from France and Germany and maybe Italy and Spain and Spain. Okay, so um, these data, I would say it's not that high impact. Okay, mainly because they are the final release. Okay, final release meaning, you know, um, it's just a, what do you call it? A conclusion of whether they actually got the tabula tabulation of the data correctly, or maybe there's any minor updates. Okay, for example, if you were to look at the German final manufacturing PMI, we see that the previous data was 57.9. 57.9 is actually the initial release. Okay, it's not the previous final release. All right, and then this time around, they are expecting 50, 57.9 as well. So no change. Okay, so I'm not going to talk. Too much about this whole PMI, otherwise it's going to take forever. All right, so there you go for Monday, nothing much. On Tuesday, okay, New Zealand will go on the second day of holiday as well. Okay, second New Year's Day, good for them. Okay, it means um, you know we can expect lower volatility volume, trading volume from the um, New Zealand usual market as well. Okay, and if you look, if we scroll down, we will see that this is OPEC GMMC meeting. Okay. Um, it's something that's of high importance, I would say, especially during this time of uncertainty, okay, when Omicron variance is looming and, you know, we don't really have much information about whether it can be deadly or things like that. But something we know for sure is that, uh, you know, this is from the experts, all right, it's actually more contagious than the previous Delta variant, all right, and because of that, oil demand has definitely and will continue to be impacted, okay, which is why the OPEC plus meeting tomorrow, okay, is very crucial, right? If you guys remember, previously they actually held the production, uh, what do you call that, production hike unchanged at 400,000 barrels, okay, which was initially planned in last July, okay? They were intending to increase, um, you know, production hike by 400,000 barrels on a monthly basis until the whole production cut, which was, um, which was actually, which, which actually took place during the um, start of the pandemic, okay, until this whole production cut is actually being um, recovered, okay. So um, we will have to pay attention to what they have to say because if they decided to increase, okay, production um, hike from four hundred thousand to five or six hundred thousand, all right, meaning um, they are actually anticipating a higher demand coming in, okay, from the um, from the public. On oil, then we may actually be seeing um, a weakening in the oil prices. Okay, and as you guys know, um, there's actually a correlation between oil price and the Canadian dollar. Okay, a weakening in the oil price will actually likely okay have a downward impact, um, a weakening impact on the Canadian dollar. All right, um, it states here all day. Okay, it's unlikely going to take all day, but um. It's more like when will it actually happen? Um, they don't normally announce the time, okay? 
So from my from my experience, okay, it's usually like around um, 1900 or 2000 GMT plus eight onwards. Okay, uh, that's when you may actually see breaking news snippets of the um, lengthy news that's going to be released later on. Okay, um, regarding this whole OPEC meeting. Okay, hopefully, um, well, I wouldn't hope for anything from them actually, to be honest, because uh, with this whole Omicron variant coming in, um, they may actually reduce the uh, what do you call it? It's actually, I would say it's actually fair game for them to reduce or to increase, all right? Because with Omicron coming in, uh, the, the demand of oil may actually decline, right? I mean, imagine lockdown again, lockdown 2.0, okay, across the globe. What, we, what is this going to cost is, um, you know, planes will stop flying, cars will stop moving, gasoline, oil prices will definitely be impacted, okay? And with that coming in, um, why would they actually produce more oil, right? So they may actually cut down on the hike or even carry out no hike for the month of February, all right? Now, on the other hand, um, recently they actually, they have actually been quite positive, been quite optimistic, okay, on this whole um, demand of oil, okay? They strongly believe the demand of oil will actually return to a very high level this year. Well, it's already this year, right? So because of that, they may actually um, increase production, okay? So I would say it's actually a fair game. I wouldn't anticipate anything coming out from them for now, okay? Other than just to wait and see what they have to say, okay? Um, yeah, so that's for the OPEC Plus. If you guys are trading the Canadian dollar, just make sure to pay attention that tomorrow around like 18, what was it, 20? 18 to 20 GMT plus eight, there may actually be this um, OPEC Plus meeting, okay? And then, um, Tuesday, is it Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday, 11, okay, 2300 GMT plus eight. There is this US ISM manufacturing PMI data release, okay? Um, previous data release was 61.1, okay? This time around, they're actually expecting a slight slowdown in their expansion, but keep in mind, okay, 60.4 is actually a strong figure even before pre-pandemic, even during pre-pandemic period okay so i would say that if the expect if the actual result turned out to be uh, an expect as expected or maybe a slight deviation from expectation um unlikely it's going to cause too much of an impact on the us dollar strength okay on the other hand if we were to actually see a strong slowdown okay keep in mind that the number of cases of omicron cases in the us has actually been increasing, okay? So um, this set of data is actually for December. So if this data is going to like, I don't know, decline to like 58, 57, no doubt it is still expanding, okay? Um, but it actually means there's quite a bit of a slowdown coming in, okay, from the United States, okay? Now that may actually have an impact on the US dollar. Specifically, the US dollar may actually weaken Okay, so yeah, something we have to pay, pay attention to as well if you guys are trading the US dollar, okay? Then moving on to Wednesday. Wednesday, what do we have? ADP non-farm, okay? This is actually like, um, I would say a, a pre-release of how the non-farm payroll will actually turn out to be. Um, I tried to use this as an indicator for how the non-farm data will turn out for the past, I think, one year or so, okay. Um, but personally, my my impression is that it's on and off, okay. Sometimes it's accurate, sometimes it's not. But in time of in times of uncertainty, like right now, okay, it is unlikely. Well, it's more likely than not, okay, that the ADP non-farm employment change figure um, may actually deviate from the actual figure by quite a bit, okay. So personally, right now, I wouldn't actually use the ADP as a good as a good indicator for how the non-farm payroll data will be this Friday, all right? So uh, nonetheless, okay, pay attention to it because there will be people out there who will pay a lot of attention to the ADP release, okay? Hence, the US dollar may actually move, okay? So that's for the um, Wednesday key news, all right? The others are pretty much, nah, wouldn't really have much of an impact, especially for the um, Eurozone data, okay? Then on Thursday, we see FOMC meeting minutes. 
As we know, in December, okay, the FOMC, US FOMC, actually decides to double up the pace of tapering. Okay, this is a very, very, very hawkish news coming in from the US FOMC. Okay, so this set of minutes will actually be for the December's meeting. Um, I would say we pretty much gotten what we want. Okay, the market has pretty much gotten what they want um, from the FOMC back in the previous meeting. All right. And because of that, I wouldn't say there's going to be much of a surprise coming in from um, the central bank, okay, when the actual, re actual release of the minutes is being carried out, okay. Nonetheless, all right, um, I would still pay attention to the minutes, okay, because I would like to know if there's any, you know, specific minute details about it, you know, being the detail oriented me, I would like to know more details about. Um, Basically, what's life going to be like after QE tapering is done, okay, in March? Because as of now, you know, um, running out, running at a 30 billion US dollar a month kind of tapering, okay, the US FOMC will actually end the whole tapering process in March, okay? So that means from um, March onwards, okay, two months or three months down the road, the US FOMC will actually no longer purchase any more bonds. Okay, so I will keep you guys updated on what's you know what went down during the minutes. You know, any more specific details included in the set of minutes? All right, on probably like Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Okay, then if we were to look down, there's this ISM services PMI. Okay, for the US. So just now I was telling you guys about the um, manufacturing the non-services ISM PMI data. Uh, where is it? On Monday. Oh, on Tuesday, sorry. So over here, okay. Now this time around, we are looking at the services PMI. Okay, same thing. Okay, um, not sure how many of you are actually aware of this, but in the United States, the services sector is actually the largest um, sector in the whole United States. Okay, it's even larger than manufacturing. All right. Um, so the services sector, I will pay. Um, the services sector PMI data, I will pay a lot, a lot of attention to it. Okay. Previous release was 69.1. This is really a darn good data. Okay, seriously, 69.1. When was the last time we actually see the US ISM services data coming close to um, 70, right? Let's just look at the, the graph. No way, no way close, all right? The last time we actually cut, you know, the last time the US services sector actually came close was back in 2004 May. All right. So this time around, they are actually expecting a slowdown, okay, in the um, services industry from 69.1 to 67.2, which, to be honest, I wouldn't say this is too shabby, okay. Um, 67.2 is still a very, very strong figure, okay. So similar to the manufacturing PMI, okay, um, if we were to see an actual data release of 67.2 or somewhere there, or maybe not much deviation from it, um, unlikely it's going to cause a weakening in the US dollar, okay? However, if we were to see a more, I would say a stronger weakening, like a 50 or something, 59, 58 or something, now that may actually be, you know, that may be a cause for concern, okay? Because like I said, you know, 60 something is very, very strong. If it can actually drop to 50 something, um, you know, that may actually show that the Omicron variant is having a very, very strong impact on, um, you know, this whole, I would say, US dollar, okay? So yeah, pay attention to the ISM services PMI data on this Thursday at 2300 GMT plus eight. Okay, moving on to Friday, the last day of the week. If you guys are into this whole average cash earnings in Japan and things like that, um, I wouldn't pay too much of an attention to it, okay? But I may, okay, maybe not. For this Tokyo core CPI data, maybe not, right? Um, see, I'm trying to find some new, I don't know, some other high impact news. Okay, and I found one, all right? The Eurozone CPI flash estimate, okay? Now, remember, ever since the European Central Bank, okay, has modified the whole uh, monetary policy back in last year, all right? It was like two few days ago, okay? Um, Inflation has actually become a very, very, very strong, key, crucial, important indicator of the central bank. Okay, um, they are trying to aim for a 2.0 inflation 
um, annual inflation target. And right now, okay, headline inflation states that previously it was reported at 4.9%, uh, way beyond, it's probably like two and a half times beyond its um, their target, all right? And this time around, they are actually expecting a slight decline, 4.8, which is, I would say, good, okay? Normally, when I, you know, when you hear from me about inflation, you know, the higher it is, the better it is, right? Well, not for the citizens of the country, of course, because things would be more expensive, but from a trading point of view, you know, an increase in inflation for that specific country is actually strong for the currency, okay? So why is it that this time around, you know, I would say that it's good, you know, when it comes to the Eurozone economy is because um, Lagarde, during his, uh, President Lagarde, okay, the ECB chief, in, during her most recent meeting back in December, she actually mentioned that, you know what, don't expect an interest rate hike from the ECB in 2022, okay, because they are still having like, you know, many uncertainties going on in the Eurozone and things like that, okay, and they would want the inflation, okay, annual inflation to be mm, sustainably achieved around the 2.0% target, okay, before they may actually um, consider a rate hike. And of course, um, the QE has to end before they actually increase interest rate hike, hence, no rate hike in 2022 is what we can actually expect, okay, so, which is why, you know, the inflation data to be released, although it's actually yellow, okay, I'm not sure why is it yellow, okay, but um, it doesn't really matter, but, um, you know, with this thing here, you know, if it actually declined eventually down to like 2.0 sustainably, that is actually a good indication that the, you know, the central bank may actually start to take action on interest rates, okay, hence, it is an, it is an important, um, piece of economic data to be paid attention to, okay? Then we have the UK construction PMI. Um, the construction sector in the UK is not as big as the manufacturing and the services sector, but nonetheless, I will still pay attention to it, okay? But um, with the recent rally and things like that in the British pound, unlikely, you know, this construction PMI data is gonna cause much of an impact on it, okay? On the British pound, all right? Then comes the most important data for this week, the U.S. non-farm payroll, the much-awaited um, jobs report on a monthly basis, okay? Um, I will give you guys more of an in-depth overview of, you know, how this set of data has been doing and what to expect and things like that on, um, on Thursday, okay? But nonetheless, just pay attention to it, okay, that this piece of data, to be released at 21.30 GMT plus eight will be of utmost importance, okay? And then of course, there's the Canadian employment data as well, okay? Um, no doubt, it's gonna, pay it. it's gonna be um, important as well for the Canadian dollar. And that's it, you know? Usually during the first week of the year, of a new year, we don't really expect much, you know, especially with many banks going on holidays, you know, liquidity is like gonna be keen and things like that. Um, but not for this time round, okay? And especially with the whole Omicron issue going on, we may actually be seeing more movements, okay? So more movements, um, I would like to turn my attention to last week, okay? Well, last year, I would say, okay? Let me just, oops, let me just bring back my chart. Okay, so last week, um, I know I did mention this, like just before we ended off the last currency call of the year, okay? That, unlikely, okay, unlikely there's going to be movements in the market because, you know, liquidity is going to be thin, um, you know, there's, traders are on holiday, basically, all right, so there's not going to be big movements in the market and things like that, however, okay, there was actually a rally in the stock market, in the equities market, okay, in the US equities market, okay, which is why we actually see quite a bit of price movements in the currency markets as well, okay, so um, today's Monday, I will give a brief coverage of the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar as well. As you can see, okay, there's actually movement. As indicated by this vertical orange line, okay, it indicates 24 December. Um, yeah, we actually see that, you know, instead of a, what do you call it, a quiet market, we actually see, we actually see a slight increase, okay, slight, slight strengthening in the Australian dollar. Okay, um, not as much as the other currency pairs that I'll be showing you guys 
tomorrow and you know the, the following up, the following days for this week okay so um as of now okay i have my resistance at 0 0.733 okay so um if you guys have been following the currency call okay then me i have to highlight this thing to you guys okay because the way i um keep my zones um but the way i draw my zones are actually a bit different from how Jin does it, okay? Because Jin usually does it on the H4 time frame, whereas for me, I do it on the daily time frame, okay? So as you can see, I actually have my support resistance lines drawn based on the daily time frame before heading down to the H4, okay? So over here, my resistance is at 733, you know, at the moment, it's actually moving down, I would say, for the past 12 hours, okay? So, um, there's not much news coming in for the Australian dollar. There's not much news coming in um, today, especially you know when the Australian banks are on holiday. Okay, so I would still ex I would I wouldn't okay I wouldn't expect liquidity to be tamed this time around. Okay, because um, yes, although the uh, banks from Australia and US are on leave on holidays, um, there may still be some movements as shown last from last week's market okay so personally right now all in all okay there is actually a clear uptrend okay right now i'm actually looking for a buy trade all right but notice that you know because of this um for the past 12 hours prices have been coming down all right Aussie dollar has been trading lower um i would actually wait i would wait until it come back up to like seven to eight level probably looking for a buy at seven to nine Okay, seven two nine. Let me just set a line here. Where is my horizontal line? Around seven two nine over here. Okay, if it crosses above seven two nine, especially, you know what? I'm gonna make it. Uh, yeah, seven two nine. Seven two nine would do. Okay. Once price crosses above seven two nine, that is when I will look for buying opportunities. Okay. At the moment, um, yes, it may be hawkish coming in from the FOMC. But okay, because of this whole um, well, last week there was actually Omicron optimism, okay, in the market, okay, which is actually why you know we are partly why we are seeing a rally in the um, in the currency market as well, okay, apart from the equities market. So a sell would be a bit of a counter trend, I would say, okay. So yes, a buying um, buying opportunities will be something that I will be looking at, okay, once the price crossed above the. 7 uh, 0 0.729 level okay so that's for the Aussie dollar okay what about the New Zealand dollar as usual okay my zones my lines are drawn on the daily time frame okay actually there should be another line here all right I think I accidentally deleted it or something okay so moving on to the H4 chart similarly okay we actually see um an overall upward move from the New Zealand dollar since the well, since Christmas Eve, okay. Um, and right now, as usual, for the past twelve hours, is coming back down, okay. Similarly, I will be looking for a buy trade of the um, New Zealand dollar once it crosses above. Let me see. Let me just set this here. I would say a 786 would be a safe level, which is around here. Okay, 786. Now, you guys can see that for the last uh, two days, three days, three trading days, okay, um, the New Zealand dollar has been testing, well, I wouldn't say testing, but has been trying to um, reach above this whole 78, oh, no, 0 0.686 level, okay, for quite a while i mean you can see this whole upper long upper shadow okay bounced off bounced off and once again bouncing off right now okay so if you want to look for a buy opportunity for this pair okay i would only do so once it breached above the 0 0.686 level okay now if it continues to go down then you know i have a support at 0 0.677 i would probably wait for it to Come back down before looking for buying opportunities okay we may actually not be um we may actually not have to wait for too long okay because over here there's this 0 0.68 level you know if you can actually well it has to clear this level before it can actually go to my support level all right so 
unless okay touch wood okay unless there's any deteriorating in the whole um, omicron situation and things like that otherwise okay unlikely we're going to see a strong downward move in the new zealand dollar for the next few days okay so with that i wouldn't say um the aussie dollar and the new zealand dollar are quite a good pair to trade I would love to go over to the other currency pairs like pound, dollar, pound, yen, or euro, dollar, and euro, yen. But you know what? I'll leave it for you know tomorrow and the rest of the week. Okay. Um, yeah. So for now, oops, let me. I think I, okay. So for now, you guys just have to pay attention to you know maybe not today, but tomorrow. You know, there's this whole um, what do you call it? ISM data coming in from the US as OPEC meeting coming in from the um, OPEC, okay, OPEC plus, OPEC and its allies, all right? So trading opportunities, yes, there are going to be trading opportunities, all right? Maybe not today, maybe from tomorrow onwards. Nonetheless, with the whole Omicron issue, you know, still around, you know, and things like that, we may get some market movements, okay? So with that, um, do we have any questions on any of the currency pairs, any of the fundamentals that I've just... Um, covered? No, 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 no. Okay, as usual, if you guys have any questions, just post it in the Twitter Club, all right? And I'll answer them, okay? Um, with that, uh, if there's nothing else, I'll hand it back to Scott. All right, thanks for that, Gimme. I have shared the trade ideas as well, just in the Aussie and Kiwi chat as well, everyone. But again, just take note of the opportunities that exist outside of those two pairs as well, like Gimme did mention. So that's something important to take note of. And I've shared the uh, link for the Forex Briefcase Managed Account Service as well. If anyone's done their review of last year and they're not particularly happy with how things went, uh, feel free to definitely allocate some funds to Forex Briefcase. It was up nearly 30%. Uh, it was 28.8%, I believe, in 12 months. So, or 28.67 in the top there of my background. So. That's it, guys. Again, thanks for, for watching and I hope to see everyone in the chat as well as tomorrow for the Euro analysis. So have a great day, everyone, and bye for now.